Morning, church. Did that sound really loud? Good. Woke you up, didn't it? Good to have all of you here this morning. I know we got a lot of things happening. Not only is the weather a little bit not as fun as it was before. Um, be careful on the steps out there. We're just, just make sure when you go back out there, you're careful. Um, the concrete is not cured yet. We can't put salt on it. That's why it's sand. Uh, the sand's much better on it, but uh, sand is, uh, um, it was fun putting it on there this morning. So anybody interested in putting sand on next time? <laughs> hey, uh, just be careful when you go back out those steps today. So I don't, I don't think it's going to fall out too quick today, maybe, but so be careful. So, hey, uh, welcome, I want to welcome the live stream this morning. We have a lot of folks that uh, have called me this morning or texted me and said we're going to be on live stream rather than come in today. We've uh, we got a lot of COVID around. Um, Austin and his family have been uh, hit with it this week, so that's the reason we have Casey back in the, in, in the seat back there today. Uh, we, had to, we had to alter things we were going to do this week because Casey was going to play the guitar and Linda was going to sing and um, lead. And uh, Linda's got a cold. She's okay. She's got a cold. Austin's got COVID, so we put Casey back there in the seat. And so we're going to wing it the way we got to wing it this morning, which means we're going to we're going to sing without some music this morning just because of last minute things. But it'll be all good. It'll be good. We'll be fine this morning. Just uh, if you're listening to us on live stream, uh, you may not hear the music, but it'll be our beautiful voices you're listening to this morning when you listen in. Uh, if you'll look at your announcements on the back there, I am going to take just a few moments with uh, with the announcements. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, we do have a women's Bible study that will get started again. Janet will get it started again. The last, uh, I don't know the date on that, the last Thursday, 27th, January 27th, again, 2nd Peter, you're going to be standing? Yeah, okay, and there's sign-up things back there, information back there on your way out on the left if you want to get that information. Also, Larry and Janet have made certain that we got the, the children's Bibles back again. You know, we've had children's Bibles here I don't know if you all noticed this or not, but we've, we've put a bunch of those out. We ran out, and so Larry and Janet made certain that we have a new supply. And uh, Janet reminded me, uh, even if for you adults, if you want to take that children's Bible with you and, and read through it, it's chronological. So uh, it, it kind of gives you the way things happen. Uh, it's a good way for you to kind of get things in perspective. And uh, then if you want to bring the Bible back to give out to some kids, that's fine too, however you want to do it. But uh, it's, uh, it's effective for adults as well as for the, for the kids. So, All right. Um, don't forget Casey's weekly Bible study every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. You can find that on our channel, Facebook or our YouTube. Uh, he's in Hebrews right now. And you can, even if, you, even if you're going to work and you can't get, catch it at 8 a.m., it's going to be on there, so you can find it at your lunchtime if you'd like. Pull it up and take a, take a listen into it a little later on. Uh, it's been really good these last few weeks. Uh, so, well, I mean, it's been good all the time, but if he's been in Hebrews these last few weeks, and I've, it's really been uh, important for me to listen to. So, uh, Sunday school, not today. We're off on Sunday school today, but Sunday school for kids and adults will begin again next Sunday. Um, youth group are off till the 12th, um, small groups, um, some of them are trying to finish up right now the last session, so we will not uh, do small groups until February with a new session. So if you've not been involved with small groups and you'd like to, see Pastor Casey and I and we'll get you hooked up with uh, a small group on a new session that we're, uh, we, we can't announce to you yet what we're doing yet because we don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, well... We're, we're just grateful we got through Christmas, right, everybody? So, um, Austin is looking for, this is, this is an ideal time for me to stop and talk about this. Um, uh, having a backup to the backup for the audiovisual is really important. Uh, today worked out because we can, we can adjust in case he can sit back there. But in those times where, with, uh, especially with all the sickness we got going on, It'd be really great if we had a third person that knew how to run that system back there, at least be able to, to operate it to, to uh, get us through on a Sunday morning. It would be awesome. So anybody that might have some interest in that, you could see Casey or, uh, 
or Austin, and um, that'd be great. A uh, big thank you uh, is in here because Dave Beckman, who has been on the board of directors since we opened, um, chairman, is, his term is now up, and so he, goes, he has gone off now, and uh, Dan McFatridge is filling that spot now. And so a big uh, thank you to Dave. It says here past five years, but actually uh, Dave's been uh, working on this church for a lot longer than five years because uh, he and Janet and some others uh, were the ones that originally had the, had the uh, uh, word from God that we need a church. We need, we, we need a church. We need a, a new church. And so Dave and Janet were on that in the very beginning along with uh, Murph and Cam and Josh and Noel and um, Matt and Ann. Uh, so Dave's been on there a lot longer than the five years. David, thank you so much for your service. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be around here. He's not leaving. He's just going off the board for, for, uh, for, the, for this term. So, and we welcome Dan on. Uh, Dan will be a great asset to the board of directors. Uh, the weather things down there for you to look at. I think I've covered most everything this morning. I went a little longer than normal, but I wanted to make sure uh, that we're covered with everything. Uh, Vicki and I, last thing, Vicki and I would like to thank all of you for the gifts and the cards and the messages over Christmas. Uh, we were overwhelmed with uh, the, the cards and messages that we got, so thank you very much. We're very appreciative of all that. And I know Casey and Kayla are too. They received several things, so I'm sure they're thankful, thankful also. All right, I think that's everything this morning. I did a lot, didn't we? We went over a lot. There's a test at the end of the service today. So <clears throat> if you don't pass it, you don't get to leave. <laughs> I hope you paid attention. Make our guests welcome this morning as, you, uh, as, we, as we leave here today. If you would, make certain that they feel welcome. I'm sure you will. You all, all do a great job with that. So we are going to be singing a little differently this morning. And um, I want to begin with a prayer time. Obviously, that's going to be the most important thing. So your, your, your bulletin's a little off today, not because of any, any pro other than we had it all printed up and done. So I just didn't go ahead and redo it and waste the paper. Uh, it's just the songs that are going to change today. So we're not going to sing those songs. But they will be up on the screen. You'll be able to sing along with all these songs today. Prayer request. Prayer request out there. Anyone? Everyone? Praying for everyone. Yes. Thing. Melanoma in his eye? As a cousin? What's his first name? Dan? Okay. Cam's cousin, Dan. Melanoma. I, I, that's a, yes. Um, Karen Cadle. Karen Cadle. Yes. So Karen Cadle, uh, who's a, a part of our church, her husband Jay, who just had open heart surgery in the last two or three weeks and is getting better, right, Rollin? You, you talked to him lately. They, he's getting much better. His aunt is at Mulberry Nursing Home. She's been there for quite a while. She was there when, when Ronnie was there. Uh, and so she's uh, pretty ill right now. So we need to, what, what was her first name? Do you remember? Mary. Mary? Mary. Aunt Mary. Okay. Aunt Mary. Yes. Anyone else? Yes, Brenda. One of my friend's son, she's in Cameron. She was in uh, Methodist Hospital on the ECU morning team for quite a few months. Um, she's been in there for a week. So they're transferring in and out constantly. So she's in Florida right now. She's in the same week. Okay. So Cameron, Cameron, down at Indianapolis Hospital. Is it Methodist? Where is that? Methodist. Okay. All right. Anyone else this morning? We can pray for Austin and his family. They, uh, he and, he and uh, Danielle both have COVID, and um, uh, they're doing okay. 
Um, the, normal, the normal issues with COVID right now, they're at home, so um, if you could just lift them up in prayer so they can get, Austin's kind of chomping to get back out, as you can imagine. Um, but he's been, uh, he's been on the phone this morning with Casey to make sure that Casey's good there, so we're all good with that, but uh, uh, just lift them up. And I know there are many others around here. Uh, um, it's good to have Dave and Janet back with us today. I know Gary and Kathy are home. Uh, they're doing much better, so they're, they're doing much better. They just opted to stay home and listen to it on live stream today. So, and Linda, Linda was, uh, had kind of a sore throat, and she just thought best she stay home today, which is good with us, right? So anyway, just remember all those folks that are going through those things and as we pray this morning. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping you'll pray for those that you didn't voice out today uh, openly. So let's, let's go to God this morning. Father God, as we come to the throne this morning, we just uh, know that you're here with us. I, I, I feel the presence, Father, among these people that uh, you're here with us that you're guiding us this morning. You're hearing the prayers of the people. As, as everyone prays this morning, Father, please hear their prayer of the day, Lord. I know you will, but we care about those that are sick, those that have been voiced out this morning from, from, from Cameron to Aunt Mary to, to Dan, who's going through this melanoma, and, and to, the, to the, any other prayer requests, Father, that you're hearing right now from this body of Christ. So many, Father, going through so much illness. And Lord, we just praise you this morning for the healing powers that you bring, the healing powers that you have, that the healing powers that you display among our people. And Lord, we'd be really remiss this morning if we didn't remember Deb Johnson in Honduras this morning, and Grace and Diane and the rest of the crew that's down there in Honduras. We lift them to you that they be safe uh, they would come home safe this week. Lord, keep us safe as we travel this week, as we go about our business, because we want you to be with us. Without you, Father, we can't do those things that we need to do. To God be the glory this morning, Father. May your Holy Spirit come and speak this morning to all of us. May the words this morning that, are, that we hear through music and through the word, be yours. May they be strengthened by your touch. May the hearts and the ears be open today, Father, to your word as we've come together in one accord this morning. And that's to give you all the praise and all the glory and all things and all ways. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. Amen. Adrian, are you reading this morning? Thank you, sir. Adrian's going to come this morning. He's going to read Psalm 145, 1 through 3 for us. You're going to read down there, buddy. Yep, you bet. A psalm of praise of David. I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. If you'll stand this morning, we're going to sing without music. It's going to be up on the screen for you. I don't know if you know this first song or not. Some of you will. Many of you may not. But it's one of my favorite songs that I've sang for years, and we've just really never brought it up. I don't think we've sang it maybe too much here. Maybe not at all. But it's a, it's a great song, so... You will sing along with me. It's kind of an upbeat song, so don't, don't be dragging it, okay? <laughs> don't drag me down. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. 
Say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Whew. Some of you did know that song. Thank you. How about this one? You know this one? We sang this one lots of times. We will glorify the King of kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of lords. He is so great I am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of lords, who is the great I am. So I'm going to let you sit down, but I got one more song for you. If you'd like to sit, I'd like, I got one more song for you. I, I, I just kept, I started getting on these songs, and I just, I had about 15 of them. But I thought, well, that might be too many. But this one is just one of my favorites, so sing along with me, will you? We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. Father, thank you this morning, Lord. Father God, thank you this morning. We just give you praise and glory this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Father, this morning. We just give you all the glory this morning, Father. And Lord, as, we, as we've learned this, the, the prayer that you taught us, as we pray that to you this morning, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning you've, you've received a, a cup and some bread in the bag again. We went back. Um, we felt like taking your bread this morning from your, your little bag this morning would be better than coming forward. We're just trying to be as careful as we can and still keep our doors open this morning. So we, um, we're going to commune together. Commune together this morning. If you'll take your bread with you and hold it in your hand. and I was... Uh, Looking in the, and I was reading some in Mark this week, and um, 
Mark 22 describes what we're about to do. It says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, take it. This is my body. So take this morning your bread, the body of Christ broken for you. Then Mark describes he took, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they drank from it. Jesus says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. And he said to them, truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Take your cup, be careful as you take that little lid off there. Take, drink. The body of Christ broken for you this morning, the blood of Christ shed for you. If you want to take that little thing and put it back in your little baggie there, Vicky's got a trash container for you and we'll get rid of that this morning. We thank, thank you for doing that for us. The wife of a pastor gets to take out the trash too. <laughs> we're going to be in the uh, we're going to be in Psalms today. So if you want to go to Psalms today, the Psalm. If you want to go to the Psalm today, that's where we're going to be. We're going to be in 19 today. So, I got something for you, just a, a little, something a little light, just to lighten up things here a little bit for you this morning. Before. It has nothing to do with the message, by the way. It's just something funny I ran across. You women are probably going to enjoy this a lot more than the men do. Here's what... Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but men don't, men don't always say what they mean. <laughs> men don't always say what they mean. When a man says it's a guy thing, it means there's no rational thought pattern connected with this and you have no chance at all of making it logical. <laughs> and when a man says, can I help with dinner? He really means, why isn't it already on the table? <laughs> Except for you guys that do the cooking. Right, Johnson? When a man says it would take too long to explain, he really means I have no idea how it works. And when a man says, take a break, honey, you are working too hard, it really means I can't hear the game over the vacuum cleaner. And my, my last one is, when a man says, I can't find it, he means it didn't fall into my outstretched hand, so I'm completely clueless. 
right? True? Not all of them. No, 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 no. I, just, I just ran across that. It was funny. I just thought it's a new year, right? So as a pastor, I felt compelled to uh, talk about the new year. I mean, is it seems logical, doesn't it, that I should talk about the new year? I mean, it's, it's the new year. Well, I, I worked on that for about 10 days. And after the 10th day, which arrived on Wednesday, I had nothing. I, I had nothing. I had, I, the only thing I had was, yeah, 2022 is on its way. That's about it. And I didn't think that would probably be a long enough sermon today to just to tell you it's here and go home. Although maybe some of you would be fine with that. I don't know. But I found myself Wednesday afternoon in my office of my home saying, God, what do you want me to do? I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I don't know what I'm supposed to preach on. I don't even have a scripture today to bring to these folks. I mean, you can ask Casey. There are, there are plenty of topics to preach on. It's not a mad... It's, it, there's plenty of topics to speak on. But see, we have this... Casey and I have this notion that it should be what God wants us to talk about and not what we just happen to come up with. So here's what I opt to do on Wednesday afternoon... And I have to apologize to the Wednesday night Bible study guys because I called Murph at the last moment and said I can't be there. I, I, I had a reason for not being there. I, I, I found where I was supposed to go at about 4.30 Wednesday. So what I opted to do, I started to just go back and do my, my I hadn't done my Bible study for the day. I, I had, we had a really busy week and that was only Wednesday. And so I hadn't got to the Bible study that I would normally do, so I just opted to, I'll just do my Bible study now because I have nothing else, right? I have nothing else at that moment. And I always go into somewhere in the psalm, at least read something. And I've told you my, I have a routine of how I go through some stuff. When I read Psalm 19, it was like God said, you finally, you finally woke up. You finally did what I'm asking you to do. Now, I've read Psalm 19 about, Bill, about 15 times since then. I'm not certain exactly what all God's got in mind for you today. But there's someone here that needs to hear something out of Psalm 19. And I feel that completely. So I'm going to read the whole, the whole chapter of 19. So stay awake, stay with me, the whole chapter of 19. And then I'm going to go back and we're going to break down some of that. We'll break down some of this psalm so you know where I'm at and where I think God was leading me to, to go with it. So Psalm 19.1. And by the way, this is written by David. Uh, the, the, the Wednesday night Bible study guys are, we've been in psalm now for how long, Larry? Six months, and we're at like 80-something or other, yes, in the 80s, somewhere. And it's been really enlightening to be in the psalm because there's a lot in here. And as we've learned, a lot of repetition. So this psalm is written by David, King David, and he, he starts out with this. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. 
In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. And now it changes a little bit. Seven says, the, Lord, the, law, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eye, to the, to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless innocent of great transgression. And verse 14 says, may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. God's word for God's people. So as I looked at that very first scripture, uh, Casey, would you put that very first one back up there? The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. You know, we, we, really are, we are really surrounded by fantastic displays that God gives us, his craftsmanship. Uh, the heavens give evidence of his existence, um, well, of his power, of his love, of, of, of his care. And I, I, I really... I really take offense to people today who try to say to me or I hear about people who think there is no God. And, and you, you, simply, you simply just look at the heavens. Look at the sky. And, and if you can tell me that there is no God and you can prove it to me, which you can't. I... I, I I had some friends, oh, this has been many years ago, maybe 25, 30 years ago, that came, they came out of the city. They, were, they lived in Chicago. We were sitting outside one night, and we, we were looking at the sky, you know? The stars were so brilliant. And they, they could not believe how brilliant the stars were. And I'm like, you got the same stars in Chicago that we got here. I mean, what's your deal? I mean, that's my thought. I didn't say that out loud. I don't think. But I know what it was. They have so many city lights. And it just dims that brightness. It's, it, it's really no secret that Vicki and I were in Hawaii for two weeks in October. And one of the things we noticed there, uh, we found this place that was high, uh, where we were staying. It was up above. We could sit and we could see, this, we could see the sky, the stars. It was brilliant. It, it seemed even more brilliant there than even at home. And we begin to wonder and we begin to think, how could anyone, how could anyone not think there's a God? Let me, let me just take that a step further. Have you ever seen a baby born? I know some of you have. Some of you have been there up front personal with it. I get that. I've witnessed it four times. And I've also been blessed to be raised on a farm. Being raised on a farm, there were mornings at 5.30 when Dad said, go out to the barn and clean out the barn. I didn't really want to be on the farm. 
but as I learned later on, it was a great discipline for me. It was a great thing for me to learn, a great place. But I saw a lot. We, we raised a lot of beef, and I saw a lot of calves born. Babies born, if you, if you watch the birth of a child, you watch the birth of a, of a new calf being born, you, you can't, you can't in any way think there's not a God. All that goes into that. Did you know, I'm pretty sure you guys are all very, I, I bet you understand this. Do you know for you to breathe today, you do not have to pump your arm to get yourself to breathe? It's automatic. It happens. Now, tell me, who invented that? We know, right? So, for us to, to take this, to, to even argue that mind-boggling beauty and the complexities, it's, it's the complexities of human life, how we're made up, how we're put together, how animals take care of their own. I, you ever see a baby calf born? A baby calf born, mommy cleans it off a little bit, and it starts to eat. A nurse immediately, almost, right? Dave raises a lot of, a lot of sheep. I, it's the most incredible thing. How does it know that? How does it know that? So the, the complexity of life couldn't have been put together by anyone but a God, the God that we serve. And as we look at God's handiwork around us, we should be thanking him daily for the magnificence of that. In Romans uh, 119, the Apostle Paul referred to the psalm when he explained that everyone knows about God because nature proclaims God's existence and power. Obviously, Paul understood it. In Matthew 28, Jesus commanded us to make disciples by sharing the truth of the gospel with others. We're supposed to take what we know, what we've learned, and we're supposed to share it. And that is sharing the existence of God. And if we don't share the existence of God then we're letting our neighbors and our family assume anything they want to assume. We're called to do that. As a Christian, as a believer, we're called to take, take the word out to all the ends of the earth, right? When we, went, when we got to verse 7, would you want to put verse 7 up there? From verse 7 on uh, through about 10 or 11, it, it changes a little bit here. It, it changes and it begins to talk about uh, the, the statutes, uh, the precepts, the commands. Remember it said, uh, um, let me get the right page. The law of the Lord is perfect. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. The precepts of the Lord are right. The commands of the Lord are radiant. The fear of the Lord is pure. David changed just a little bit there. He changed a little bit with what, where he was headed. I, I don't know if he went in a different direction, but he's giving, you, he's giving you information. The law of the Lord is perfect. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy. The precepts of the Lord are right. When we think of statutes and precepts and commands, we often think of rules. We have a lot of rules. We maybe have too many rules. What do we do with rules? Well, rules are there to keep us in the boundaries, right? We're supposed to, we're supposed to have boundaries that we try to, to live with. And, that's, and, and that's, that's the reason this, this book of love that God's put before us 
gives us gives us those outlines. It gives us that guideline. These this is I, I know I I just talked about rules with this, but this is really a, not a don't do this, don't do that. It's just giving you the love of God and telling you what he would prefer and what's best for him and what's best for us. We don't always follow it very well, but we try. So God's law revives us. It makes us wise. It brings joy to our heart. It gives light to our eyes. It warns us. It rewards us. He said that in here. That's because God's laws are guidelines. They're guidelines. He gives us choice, doesn't he? He gives us choice within those guidelines to choose what we want to do. Sometimes we don't choose very well. Let's just be honest. Sometimes we don't choose very well. We don't make very smart decisions sometimes but here's what I have found that that little that little that little voice in your head when you just said the wrong thing or done the wrong thing it's that little voice that goes hello Did you forget about me? Hello. Hello, Gary. It brings me back into, I remember in May of 1984 when I met Jesus for the first time. You know, here's the deal. You all have heard this before. I was going to church. I was really a pretty good church goer. I didn't know the difference between being just a good church goer and knowing, having a personal relationship with Jesus. I didn't know that. I didn't get that. I was going to church. I was doing things in the church. I was probably even, I know I was on a few committees. So I was just going through the church stuff, right? Until May 14th of 1984. When I met Jesus face to face. Changed me completely. Immediately? No. But I still remember days and months after that of, of, of trying to fall back into the old habits. And that voice saying to me, you're out of bounds. That word you just said is not appropriate. Now, do I I verbally hear that? No, I don't verbally hear that. But I, I know, you know, I don't, what is that? Holy Spirit speaking to us, right? Saying, okay. You're out of bounds. You've got to get back in bounds. In every sport we play, well, there's a, you know, like a boundary, right? You've got to play within the boundaries or they're going to blow a whistle at you and say, get back in here. It's like that whistle being blown by the referee, you know, the Holy Spirit saying, get back in here. Get back in the boundaries. I just... I just love how David went about this. I just love what he was telling me. I I don't know know exactly who this is for today, but I know there's someone today that needed to hear this. Someone today needed to hear these words. And we can say Happy New Year all day long, and I'm grateful for a 2022. I'm grateful for a Vicki and I looked at each other at about 12.05 the other morning. He goes, hey, we made it to 2022. And we're on with the rest of our day, right? But Paul, or uh, David, is writing to us here and telling us how, what we're supposed to do. He's, he's talking, he's talking, to God. the law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. It refreshes the soul. The fear of the Lord is pure. It endures forever. I have to tell you there on 9, verse 9, when I ran in, it said the fear, the fear, 
the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. I have to tell you right now, I, I stopped for a little while on that, took a look at nine, thought about nine for a little bit. I, 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 I've had people that have been uh, uh, sick all around me here lately. Um, not, not real close to me, but I've, got, I've had two daughters and a son-in-law that have all, all been hit with COVID in these last two weeks, two or three weeks. And when you get family, and I've had two, two, of, my, two of my best friends hit it with it. So when you get family and friends that it's, a, you know, What's the first thing you start doing? You start getting a little fearful. What, 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 what's going on? <laughs> that kind of thing. I can't say that I'm, I'm fearful of anything, really. I'm careful. Do you know if you go out here and go down these steps today, icy steps, you're going to be careful, right? If you get ready to cross this street out here today, you're going to look both ways. It's not because you're afraid or that you're fearful. It's just that that's what we do to be careful, to watch where we're at. If you go out into this Montmorency intersection, and by the way, for those of you that are new, don't know me very well, I went to this school over here. I saw a lot of accidents in this intersection out here. Because I, we, just, we just farmed just north of here when I was being raised. A lot of accidents, and some of them extremely serious. So I can assure you when I go out to this intersection, stoplight or not, I'm going to be careful. Am I afraid? No, I'm not afraid, but I am careful. So that's the way I attack, try to attack anything today. A virus, I'm not afraid, but I am careful. Sharing the word of God, I'm not afraid to do that. I may be careful on how I share it, depending upon who I'm sharing it with. And other times, I'm just bold and throw away the be careful part. David is, as we've learned uh, uh, from the guy's study, and Larry's really led that really well, um, David is all over the board. He's, he's like everywhere. He's, his, his emotions are everywhere. And if you read much of the psalm and, and read especially the part that David wrote, he's like all over the place. But I really like 19. It spoke to me in ways that I didn't think it would. You see, when I got down to 12 and 13, 12 and 13 say, but who can discern, but who can discern their own errors? You could, you could, you could put sin out there. Forgive my hidden faults. You, you could take that scripture, that 12 scripture right there, and you could, you could tape that on your mirror and you could say that every morning. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. 13 says, keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. You know, guilt, guilt is a, Guilt is a, by the way, it's a powerful thing. Guilt and shame are powerful things. And it plagues a lot of us believers. But there's, a, there's actually a good part of guilt and shame. You see, I, 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 went to the, I went to an altar and found Jesus because of guilt and shame. I was in, I was in corporate world, and I was, just trying to, I was just trying to get my way to the top. I went to church because I thought it was the thing to do, and a lot of the people I dealt with went to church there, and I wanted to show them that I could go to church. 
But the guilt and shame is what took me to the altar. It's what, what brought me to my knees. Some people worry about sins they unknowingly commit. Do I need to go over that with you again? That they unknowingly commit and they, they, they worry about, they, they're concerned about those. Or maybe it's a sin because you didn't, you didn't like put your full heart into the task that, that you thought God was asking you to do. You know, guilt can play an important role in all we do. But that's the reason that Jesus took your sin for you. He took it. He didn't have to. But he did. Y'all watched, how many of you, you don't have to show me your hand, but several of you watched The Chosen. If you haven't watched The Chosen, you probably should ought to watch The Chosen. It's, it's, um, it's, it's out there on uh, YouTube. And I don't think season three is out there yet, but you can get the DVD. Uh, it's a, a pretty, pretty interesting uh, series. Um, something probably that you probably want to um, take a look at. It talks about the, the, uh, Jesus and uh, his, his coming into, um, into power. But guilt and shame should not cripple us. And some Christians are allowing the guilt and shame to cripple them. Don't do that. Let Jesus lead you. Let him, let him take care of that for you. He can handle that. He, he died for you to do that. He's willing to listen to you about that. Follow him. So when I got to 14, when I got to Scripture 14, <clears throat> this first part is really familiar to a lot of folks. Uh, many times you'll hear this in a benediction forum. May these words of my mouth and these meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight. And when I, when I read that, I wrote, down, I wrote down this question for myself, but you all, you all want to listen to it? Here's, here's the question I wrote down. Would I change the way I live if I knew that every word and thought would be examined by God? Would I change the way I live if I knew that every word and thought would be examined by God? Let me put that on you. Would you change the way you live if you knew that every word and thought would be examined by God? You see, David asked that God approve his words. He asked that God would approve his words and his reflections. They were like offerings to the altar, so to speak. But my favorite part, Casey, you'll put that back up there. Voila. This is right here. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Ever since Wednesday evening, ever since Wednesday evening when I've discovered this it's the same old story how many times have we looked at Psalm 19 before and read it probably multiple over the years but some days it's like I saw that I don't know how I saw that what I saw but when I got to the bottom of it it was like got it so ever since Wednesday I've been saying Lord you're my rock and my redeemer Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer, and you I trust. Let's pray. Lord, if there's someone here today that needs to
turn their life to you. If there's someone here today that just has been a church goer for years and all of a sudden today they realize that they hadn't, they hadn't given themselves to you, to your son. May it be today, Father. May that one person or two people or the congregation be recommitting their lives back to you today. Their Lord, their rock, their redeemer. Thank you for the words of David who have awakened some of us today. I've spoken to some of us today in ways that we didn't see coming. And Father, for some that still haven't seen the words yet, still haven't understood them yet today, I pray, Lord, that they will. I pray that they will. I thank you for this day. The second day of, of the year 2022, Father. But for you, Father, it's just another day. And for us, it's a day to honor you. We're going to praise you throughout this week. And may you hear our praises. May you feel our praises. May you touch our brothers and sisters. May you touch those that are not yet believers. Maybe through a word from someone in this congregation that will turn somebody's life around. Maybe for one of our young folks who are searching and seeking. May you turn their life around. Maybe it's someone who's listening to a live stream today, coming into their living room today, Father, and they're on their knees now, thanking you for the words that you've given them today. In all these things, Father, we praise you. We praise you and we give you glory because you are the God above all gods. You are our rock and our redeemer. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. All God's people said. Hey, if you'll stand with me, you know this familiar song as we close today. Stand with me. It's an old Gaither song. <clears throat> His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he's a great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is he, bow down before Jesus, my Lord. Now may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Go in peace. Happy New Year to you all. <clears throat>